Welcome to the Good Shepherd in the Child podcast, where we explore the spirituality of the Christian child through the method of Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. I am your host, Carrie Mecki Lozano. So very soon, on December 15th, will be Jeanne Gobi's birthday. And so I wanted to dedicate this episode to Jana and to get a kind of a glimpse, a better glimpse into who she was. And so I've invited our dear friend Claudia back onto the podcast to kind of speak into her memories of Jana and the eight years that she spent living with Jana and Sophia. I hope you enjoy. Claudia, welcome back to the Good Shepherd and the Child podcast. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to be part of it again. It's always a blessing to have you with us. Would you tell us a little bit about who you are, Claudia, and how you got involved in Catechesis of the Good Shepherd? Well, I'm Claudia Margarita Schmidt, and I look like American German, but my heart is (laughs) South American. I was born and grew up there. How did I go to the Catechism of the Good Shepherd? That's interesting. I did not know there was a Catechism of the Good Shepherd. I've never heard about Safia Cavalletti or Jana Gobi. That's too long to tell, but I got to know this Sophia and this Jana and this Catechism of the Good Shepherd. Uh, going to, to Rome to know Sophia because I had to organized some symposium, some conference in Munich. Mm -hmm. And so I went there and saw these ladies. And there I saw Jana for the first time, whom I will talk now for a bit. And there I knew this is Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. That's how I got to learn what it was. Mm. You lived there for a while working with them, is that right? Yeah, I lived eight years in Rome with them. And so it was a beautiful, fun, and deep time with them. Yeah, that's that's a significant amount of time to work with them. That's so awesome. Jana's birthday is just right around the corner. It's on December 15th. And so I thought it would be really great if we could just dive into who she is. Who is Jana Gobi? But I've wanted to kind of start off, I know for myself, I've always pronounced her name wrong. So, Claudia, would you tell us what is the proper way to pronounce her name? Jana Gobi. Jana. So, I used to say, like, Gianna, like that long E sound, but it's, there's no long E there. It's Jana. Jana. Uh Uh-huh. Jana. Jana. Yes. Is that correct? Jana. Uh Uh-huh. Jana. Okay. So, who was Jana Gobi? So the first time I saw Jana, uh, Sophia wrote that I went to Rome 1988, but I think it's 89. Mm -hmm. And so I went to know this Sophia Cavalletti, not knowing who she was. And I saw a person very quietly sitting there looking at me with bright eyes, shining Mm. eyes, observing me. And I knew, okay, that this lady's name is Jana. And so we had lunch, and then Sophia says, and I did not know Italian. I never learned Italian. And I didn't know that Sophia spoke fluently Spanish. (laughs) So I tried to communicate, and Sophia asked Jana to show me the atrium. So without barely talking, just with some words, Jana showed me the atrium, showing me Level one, two, and three. Uh, And her eyes were talking. Always, always her eyes were talking. Mm -hmm. They were like a light. They were like a fire. And I was not immediately in love with the catechesis because I fall in love slowly, slowly, slowly. And that was Jana's tactic too, to let me space, to leave me space to let me grow. And so slowly we became friends and she always was there for me. And when I learned how to do material, I had a jigsaw, not electric like we have it now, or I had it later. So I did all by hand Hmm. and she controlled my material. I copied it, I had on my side the Italian one and then I did it in German because 
I gave trainees in Germany. And I remember I did the good shepherd and the sheep and the hired man. And she took the hired man and cut, her, cut the feet off. Yeah. And I said, what are you doing? And she said, no, no, no. The hired man cannot have the same height as a good shepherd. Mm. And I said, but now the feet are off. She says, doesn't matter. Mm. And so she went gently through my, through my material I did. And it was just fun. It was very tender. We went to the pizzeria. Her favorite pizzeria was Buffetti. We went very often there. So we had a lot of fun and a lot of deep conversations. Mm -hmm. uh, she told me that Maria Montessori called her Piccolina, which was little one, my little one. Mm -hmm. And she told me, too, that Montessori spoke with her eyes. Now, I don't know if Jana took that over from Montessori or Jana had that already from when she was born. Hmm. I don't know. So how did Jana get involved in Montessori? How did she, she grew up in the countryside, right? Yes. And you know, I don't know this question, this answer. I asked many people, many people also lived in Rome mm -hmm. and I couldn't have a question. I know how she knew Ardele Costagnocchi, but I don't know how she knew Montessori. I wonder if that's how, through Adela, if that's how she came in contact with the work of Maria Montessori. No, because she knew, um, she did Adele Costagnocchi. She became a, a Montessorian, and then she did school, teacher school, the regular mm. school, after Montessori. Mm. And Adele Costagnocchi, she was the philosophy teacher of Jana. Mm. Which I didn't yeah. know. No, I didn't know that either. Yeah. Because in school they had also philosophy and the, and the pedagogy and the educational um, school. Right. So, Jana, she learned when she was training to be a Montessori guide, she, part of that training was specifically with Maria Montessori. Is that correct? Or maybe you're right. Maybe maybe they can't. She got to know Montessori through Adele. Maybe she did. Yeah. Mm. Now I wish both were here to ask. You know. Right. I know. That's always hard. But she met Maria Montessori and and worked with her. Correct. Yes. Yes. And she gave a gave a training or two with Montessori. Wow. That's really neat. I just finished reading the Montessori Baby book, which is really fantastic, but it's not a CGS book at all. And it was so fascinating to me. A number of times, Jeanne Gobi came up in this Montessori book, which really highlighted for me how Jeanne was a collaborator, in, especially in the work, the infancy work of Montessori. Um, she didn't just be trained in a Montessori method, she actually had an influence on the work. And I thought that was just really amazing. Yep. Jana did things very, very silently. Mm. She never was in front of people. She was only at the back, working in the back. You never saw her in the front. Mm. And, you know, when people came to visit the atria, you know, from other countries and so on, mm -hmm. um, people came to, to interview Sophia and John and so on. And Jana saw that people just came there to, to because of their names, because they are famous. She turned around and went away. <laughs> if she noticed that people came to know about the child, she stayed all the time and gave all what she had to these people. Mm. Sophia was more diplomatic. But Jana, and, and it made me smile because she was really truthful. You know, she says, no, they don't want to know about the child. I, I'm going. <laughs> That's really humble. Yeah. Were you ever able to go to her, her house in the countryside? 
Yeah, I did every year. Uh, we did vacation there and uh, was blessed to go there and stay with Sophia and Jana. And we did like playing ball. Of course, I had to chase the ball all the time. <laughs> we did uh, countryside, did you, see, you say like that? Right, countryside, yeah. Uh, they showed me uh, the medieval uh, countries, you know, museums. Jana showed me everything, what culture, what there was nearby. They showed me the the ocean. They went on the, onto the knees into the ocean. They, mm. Yeah, I went many times to the country house, and I have beautiful pictures also from it. Mm. Was there a different side of Jana that you saw? Oh, yeah. She oh. was more relaxed, and her eyes were even more bright. Yeah. In um, Essential Realities, there is a chapter of Sophia writing about Jana after she passed away. It's it's an incredibly sweet, mm -hmm. sweet writing. And yeah. she talks about Jana on the countryside just coming to life and just loving to go do the plows and come back dusty and um, how very simple life was out there, but also how in beautiful and engaging it was like she talks about how she couldn't look away because it was just all so beautiful it was beautiful yeah mm. and you know Sophia always wanted to study in the afternoon and John and I escaped <laughs> we just said no no we won't study let's go away <laughs> where would you go oh we just took the car I took, took Sophia's car and we drive drove through the fields you know at the fields and so on and so she was uh, not like a child. She was a child, you know. Mm. Mm. And you know how humble she she was. Uh, Sophia asked me to take the level one atrium in in Via de Lausini, mm -hmm. and I thought, great, I will observe Jana, the priest, and and she, Jana says, no, you will be the catechist. I will be the aide. I said, no way. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she was joking. No, she was not joking. So I was a catechist, and she was my aide. Mm. And I understood she wanted me to learn from the child and not from her. How humble is that? Yeah. yeah. And, of course, she guided me. And, of course, we met before a session, after a session. Uh, like I was a teacher before, I had my own ideas. I said, can I do that? She says, I don't like it, but you may. <laughs> you know, the, the freedom she gave me. And then it went all wrong. And she didn't say, I told you, but I knew she wanted to. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, I I couldn't believe it when she said that to me. But she was mm -hmm. very humble. I love that. I love, it just seems so kind of, open fisted, you know, like it's, I think sometimes in this work, we can be very black and white about there's a right and wrong way to do things. And you're saying that Jana wasn't like that. She very much taught you how to follow the child more than taught you the proper and improper way of doing it. I, I think that's beautiful. And we could learn a lot from that <laughs> absolutely and when we prepared you know we we did the observation of the child and then we said okay we could prepare this presentation for this child children and for the group which was always little groups and then it completely was different because we followed the child and then we met again and observed the child so we had not an agenda, but we had our observation. Mm -hmm. and that taught me also, you follow the child. Right. right. So y'all met for a significant amount of time after the children left the atrium to discuss. Yeah. Okay, and you, what did you see? And you can imagine we had good spaghetti in between. <laughs> so. Did she cook a lot? Uh, not a lot, but she cooked good. Hmm. So when I met with Rebecca about Sophia, she mentioned that they only had atrium once a week. Yes. 
So what did Jana do with the rest of her time? What what occupied her mind and her body the rest of the week? You may guess, Carrie. <laughs> the children? Yes. Her own <laughs> children. That means from her uh, brother and uh, children in general and material and many meetings with Sophia where they're, they didn't discuss like, okay, we have to do a new one and a new one and a new one material, but how can I improve the material that it suits, how do you say, um, to the child, that it fits to the child? Mm-hmm. And they were not always sweet together. Oh, yes, this is, we, are, <laughs> we agree with it, we are fine. But there were some heavy discussions too. And I love to see that. You know, I love yeah. that they were normal. Yeah. The and humanity of it. I love it. Yes. They argued. That's yes. great. Yes. And so they met uh, many times. They were, uh, Sophia was always faithful for the thousands of letters she got. She answered every letter. And also in these letters, Jana and Sophia were, were uh, seeing what should we answer, how is the best uh, the best way to answer, you know? Mm. So they were a team. They were always a team. Mm-hmm. And Sophia did the woodwork mostly, and Jana did the painting work. Mm. And we always think that Jana, uh, that Sophia didn't do any work, but she did. They also were there a team. In everything, they were a team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in Sophia's writing, she says that there's not a material that both of their hands didn't help create like it was such a a collaboration between the two of them yeah yeah they were uh, yeah they were always together and it was also just talking you know about spirituality and what Sophia read and what Jana always was with her Montessori books I was amazed I said Jana you read those books 50 times yes and I always discover something new Mm. Did she have a favorite? Do you remember her reading any specific book? The last years, it was Formation of Man. The mm. last four years, I think, it was Formation of Man. Was John a part of um, going and giving talks at different Montessori conventions and conferences? No. No. Not that I know. She was too humble for that. Mm. She went one time to, to like, conference to to Renil de Montessori, but not as as participant, just as listener. Right. We went there, where I got angry with Renil de Montessori. And then Jana pulled me back. <laughs> You're getting angry. Come, come, come. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So... Looking back at your time with Jana, what would you say are some of the lessons that she taught you, either directly or indirectly, about the child? That the child has a deeply, deeply, uh, she would say Jesus uh, in the child. And that's a language Maria Montessori said, Jesus in the child. Mm. And that we doesn't matter how our mood is and what is going on in our world and what we feel and so on. We have to see Jesus in the child. That's what she taught me. Mm. And to see Jesus in the child, your whole being will be different. Yeah. Yeah. Especially for the more difficult children. Yeah. That works. Of course, I cannot say I can do it every time, but... (laughs) That would be a lie, but she could. Mm. She could. And I think because she had this this conscient Jesus in her, too. You know? And she had this this patience where where I would already be uh, impatient, where I would be already giving up. No, 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 Claudia. Paciencia. Mm. And then she gave me a little paper on the side and said, wrote down, if you observe the child, 
you cannot do anything wrong. Mm. So observe the child to do the right thing. Wow, I thought, now I have to sit down and observe. Also patience. You know, those, those were the big things she... Many other things, but those were the main things she taught me. Yeah. Well, those are kind of all-encompassing lessons. Yeah, a lesson forever, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Foundational lessons that you kind of keep working on. The patience that you mentioned in the the writing of from Sophia about Jana, she talks about how Jana's life on the farm in the countryside taught her that patience. Oh, it's it's just beautiful. I'll just read it because it's oh, it's just so gorgeous. It's on page forty eight of Essential Realities at the bottom. It says the seasonal rhythms of the countryside entered into Jana and forged in her the discipline she brought to her work as an educator. The countryside rhythms impose a discipline because they cannot be rushed, but require you to wait patiently. They do not allow you to pretend, for example, that a geranium flowers out of season. Gianna has learned very well how to wait. Her peasant patience was linked to an, in an absolute natural way with her Montessorian attitude an attitude that wishes the educator to know and respect the time of each child's maturation. As Gianna watched the slow changes in nature, she also knew how to watch, without attempting to hasten the slow normalization of the child in his or her manifestation as a child of God. Gianna's knowing how to wait was the expression of a deep respect, a religious respect in front of the manifestation of the miracle of life in all its forms. That's just so beautiful to me. And it speaks so much of what she taught you of patience, observation. Just stop stop intervening. Just observe. Observe the child. Wait for that slow maturation that's going to happen. Yeah. And the joy she had. Mm. The joy, especially for the little ones. Que joya. What, what joy. Mm. Que perla. Man. What a pearl. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other memories that you would like to share about Jana? Yeah. Um, when she died, uh, Sophia called me like, I think it was um, five in the morning. Mm. I was in Germany. And she says, Jana died. And I began to cry. And she says, no, 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 non così. Uh, not like this. Non fare così. Uh, don't cry like this. Don't do that. And so I didn't. It was like, what? <laughs> and so it was a shock, you know. And like a shock, after the shock, slowly, slowly, you're realizing that she's not there anymore. And, yeah, that was my last shock, my last goodbye, because nobody and I did not expect that. Right. It was, a, it was all of a sudden. Yeah, and there is one thing I wanted to share more. Uh, our dear album pages, lovers. <laughs> Jana told me one week be before she died on the phone, Claudia, I have to rewrite my album pages. <laughs> so just imagine, the found co-founder of the catechesis says, I have to rewrite them because so many things changed. Constantly moving. Because you feel like she said that because she had grown in more and more awareness that she felt like she needed to to be more essential, to change? No, because also her observation, the children also have different, uh, they're not different, but they have different ways or she observed different moments in the child or different ob observations with mm. her own child. Not because they're wrong, but... Because they are different now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I was like shocked. Like, what? Yeah. 
<laughs> you mean I'm not done? I thought I was finished. No,、nope. I thought I finished that project. <laughs> Ever. Ever. <laughs> Through constant observation, I'm going to be rewriting my album pages for the rest of my life. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> no wonder those album pages count towards like college credit for masters. Like, <laughs> yep, that, that they're a lot of work. <laughs> yep. What humbleness, though. So even in that, though, you see such humility that Jana is saying, "Oh, you know, all that work I've done, I need to keep revising it. The children keep revealing different things to me." Yeah, always, and, always.、Mm, such humility, and I like that on her. It was never done.、It、was never、mm-hmm. done. Yeah. So that's a little bit of Jana in my heart, and I miss her. I miss her a lot.、Mm-hmm. I can imagine that that was such a significant part of your life for such a long time. Reading Sophia's writings, and she talks about at the very end. She says,、um, "I cannot write longer." Jana just really took a place in y'all's hearts. And you can really feel the the emptiness that was left there, the love that y'all had for her. It's just very tangible. Yeah. I really appreciate you speaking about her with us, giving us just a glimpse into who she was、yeah. and her humanity. I love that. I so appreciate you opening up your heart to us in this way. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you all for listening to this week's episode of the Good Shepherd and the Child podcast. So I have some resources for you if you want to read some of Jana's writing, or if you would like to learn more about who she was. And I'm going to read some parts, a quick biography of Jana, from our commemorative journal of Jana Gobi. So both Karen Maxwell and Anne Garrido wrote a pieces of her life, and I want to share some of those highlights with you. Jana Gobi was born in Rome on December fifteenth in nineteen nineteen, and she spent a significant amount of her youth at her family farm, which she called the country. She became a primary Montessori educator when she was nineteen years old, having participated in a course by Adela Costanoki and Maria Antoinette Paulina. Her certificate was actually signed by Dr. Maria Montessori herself. Jana worked for fifteen years with Adela in her schools, and she even assisted Dr. Maria Montessori in a course given in Rome in 1950. Jana was instrumental in the development of the Assistance to Infancy course, and she was even one of the principal presenters of the course alongside Silvana Montanaro in both Rome and Houston, Texas. It is Adela who connected Jana with Sophia, and their friendship and work began. Sophia and Jana worked together on the work of the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd for over fifty years. So the main text that I am going to point you to is this commemorative journal of Jana Gobi. It has. Biographies about her, but it also has testimonies about her by people who were close to her, including Claudia. And there's also a bunch of her writings in this journal. So this would be my top recommendation for you. If you already have a copy of Listening to God with Children, it is by Jana herself, so that would have been my top pick to recommend to you. But this book is currently out of print. We are working on getting it back in print for you. So if you have a copy, this is a great time to pick it up. If you don't, just wait until we get it back in print. Also, in Joyful Journey, Jana was one of the collaborating authors for that book, especially Chapter Three. Jana wrote Chapter Three herself, and. I'm going to put a link in our show notes because we discussed Chapter Three about two summers ago, and so I'll put a link to that episode in our show notes. The other books that I would recommend is A Year with Sophia Cavalletti, which has a section about Jana with a bunch of Jana's quotes. That's by Anne Garrido, and then also Essential Realities has the letter that was written by Sophia about Jana after she passed away. This tribute to Jana is also in the commemorative journal. It's the same text. 
I also want to remind everybody that we have the audio version of the third edition of The Religious Potential of the Child. And so in our show notes, there is details on how you can access that through Podbean. This podcast is sponsored by the United States Association of the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. We would like to thank all of our contributing members because you are making this podcast possible. If you would like to know more about the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd, or if you would like to become a member, please go to cgsusa.org. Thank you all for joining us this week. We will see you in two weeks. Go and fall more deeply in love with God.